there was this other training program, the Numeracy Champion Training Program that we did, um, and it was for senior managers um, in this organisation. And so we started off in the usual way, you know, in one word, how do you feel about maths? And this woman said, imbecile. Imbecile. I was like, really? And it turned out, you know, um, I mean, this one was in her 40s now. Mm. Um, and when she was a child, mm. when she was 11 years old at school, mm. her maths teacher had told her that she was an imbecile and that she didn't need to even think about getting a qualification in maths. She had no chance. That is so damaging to a child to say that, that yeah. word. I know. I mean, it's such a horrible word, isn't it? Mm. You know, what was really, really um, devastating for her, but horrible to hear, um, she was now in her 40s and she'd be carrying that around literally, yeah. that on her shoulder. Yeah, you would. And, you know, every time she thought about going for a promotion or, you know, thought um, she'd apply for a new job mm. or go on to a training programme, if there was any sight of maths mm. within that, then, you know, that word just kept popping back into her head, oh, you're an imbecile, yeah. you can't do that. It's terrifying. Really, really damaging. And, um, you know, here she was now, fantastic, that she'd somehow found herself on a numeracy champion programme. But, you know, she'd never really overcome that. And she kind of started courses in maths, but then dropped off again and never really found the confidence to take it forward and really it had really held her back you know with career progression um, I can understand why it must have been a throwaway comment by the teacher I wouldn't have thought she meant to do that damage but it just goes to show what a label can do to someone can't it and to try and shake off that label which this lady clearly did yeah. it took her a, a long time and it must have it must have been really damaging for her it did take her a long time and it, you know, when she was talking about it um, and she found the courage within that programme, mm. you know, with other Dang. managers, you know, to actually really open up about it. But, you know, you could see um, that it was still impacting her emotionally, you know, she was a bit tearful, you mm. know, talking about it. Well, you've been carrying that around for 20 years, 20, 30 years, you know, um, thinking, I can't do that because an imbecile you know I can't do maths um really really um impacted on her in a big way and then she took the courage to share that in the group it's almost a bit like a therapy session yeah. isn't it sometimes the numeracy champion training because you share your feelings and then others in the room often say that they felt the same way and it can be really powerful that sharing experience it really is powerful because quite often we find um, people think it's just them mm -hmm. and they need to hide it and nobody must know. Yeah, I don't want to be exposed, but actually, once they do say it and they tell their journey, then, you know, what we quite often find is that, you know, another 10 people in the room will say exactly the same thing. Um, and it kind of normalises it. Oh, it's really common to feel like this in the UK. You know, lots of people feel anxious about this and, you know, if we open up, that's, it's kind of the first step um, and the, it, it's almost giving yourself permission to think, oh, maybe I can do this, maybe I can give it a go. Absolutely. And I think what's really amazing about that story is that she put herself forward to be a numeracy champion. So yeah. she obviously had a lot of fear and a lot of emotional maths baggage attached, but yet she went forward and, and became a champion to support others, which I think is a really inspirational story. It was really inspirational and she was inspirational and what was great is she'd very much come on the programme because of that, because she didn't want um, other people in her teams right. to, you know, feel like they're sitting there suffering in silence, um, you know, and she wanted to be able to um, have these conversations with them and give them a safe space to feel that, you know, they could talk about it and they could... Um, she could signpost them and offer them help and support to get where they needed to be. So yeah, that was um, that was a really lovely story.